Lemon Amiga present. A play giant video review. Sit back and enjoy the show. Hey there, welcome to another Lemon Amiga Game Guide and Review. In this week's episode, we'll be checking out Awesome, developed by Reflections Interactive and released by Psygnosis in 1990. After our ray traced intro, we get to see the John Harris box art, and then it's onto the actual game title screen itself, featuring the name Awesome and the creators Martin Edmondson, who you may know from Shadow of the Beast, and Cormac Batestone. Of course, the music by Tim and Lee Wright, the Wright brothers, and you can switch the music on and off, as well as the sound effects, and play an absolutely silent game if you like. You can restore a stored position, or you can start a new game. So, for this small review, let's start a new game, and let's see how far we can get. <laughs> Apparently, we control the Elopede spacecraft, which has just warped into Octarian space, and here we must take on a number of enemies, and you can see the number of enemies in the bottom corner of the screen, and you can also see those on the radar at the side. The central figure on the instrument panel gives us a readout of our shield power, and we get a visual representation of that to the right, and sometimes the enemies will drop discs which will recharge our shield if you find those inside the spacecraft but they disappear pretty quickly so you might find shield battering and you can also see a score and we gain a hundred points while blowing up each enemy and so the rules of the first part of this game are pretty easy to understand blow up those enemies and try to gain as many shield discs as possible and that allows us to balance our energy going on to the next section you can see I can balance to give more power to the shields or more power to the firepower of our craft and at this point most experts on the long plays usually put full power to our firepower and they ignore the shields because when you collect those discs, that power will automatically go to the shields, and if your shields are full, then you've collected them for nothing. The second section is rather like asteroids, and unlike Blood Money, these could have been ray traced just like the intro, but unfortunately not, and trying to fly this ship around isn't particularly easy. Inside some asteroids or boulders you'll also find a crystal and those will appear as blue dots on the map and those you can trade for extra money when you make it to a starport. Yes, in this game we are in the Octarian system which is about to get blown up apparently by the Promethean cannon which is being pointed at this entire system so we have a certain time to get from one planet to another and the aim of this game is to escape the entire system before it blows up. So there is an objective to get from A to B in this game, and the objective is to stay on the move and hopefully survive.
In La Cargo, we have 15 discs from the first section, no crystals to sell, and I'm just transferring as much power as possible to the cannons, because the mid-level boss in this game is particularly difficult to knock out, unless you transfer all power to that. After a stunningly silent warp, we get to see the split as we split away from our mothership and we take on the boss in our little explorer craft and if only that was possible in the Elite Dangerous. Yes, this game is made up of various sections and sub-games and on the third one we need to take on this snake-like dragon creature which winds its way backwards and forwards around the screen pretty similar to the C64 game Alicat and we found a guardian on there pretty similar to this and using those same tactics we need to get in its way and then when it's retreating we can always fire some more shots and we can knock that out you see the screen flashing it means we are taking a hit and of course our shields are on bare minimum because our firepower is on maximum. You should be able to see an increase in size of firepower. Maybe not so much on this level, but those shots should be visually bigger if you increase the power to the firepower. And that should take care of the boss, no problem. Game section 4 of the first part of this game, we are treated to an overhead shooter, pretty much like Amnios, which came later. So it's a very polished version of this kind of overhead shooter on the Amiga. And when enough enemies have been blown away, that means you can land on the landing pad and you can make your way through an alien breed type level, collecting power ups and things like that. The only thing on this alien breed level is the time you can see on the bottom corner. No, we don't get shields or firepower anymore. All that disappeared with the ship. What we get is time. And if you touch any of these enemies, you will lose time. And that time will disappear so that you cannot complete the level. So you cannot avoid most of these. You have to take these on or rush through and know the patterns in advance. And if you don't know the patterns in advance, you will not have enough time. Awesome gives the player three attempts to get through this level. Unfortunately, it will always give the player exactly the same time every time. And so if you don't march through to the end of level boss and get through to that starport terminal, then you will die every single time. It's a pity that the time limit actually depends on the enemies killed on the previous level and in the game does not allow you to go back to the previous level, of course, and accrue more time so you'll be in an endlessly defeated situation. The alien Bree levels are surprisingly short, but it isn't possible to really get lost. All that is possible to do is to run out of time, and you can see I defeated the end of level guardian, but run out of time to actually make it to the entrance which I needed to get to, to the underground city. And these power-ups you can see me collecting are actually firepower power-ups which don't make a great deal of difference, but you have to go out of your way to collect those anyway, in the hope that they will make a difference to the enemies later on. And you can almost avoid these or memorize the pattern and it turns into a Rick Dangerous type of game if you know the pattern and the right place to go, or rush straight through to the exit. And so I'm actually wasting time trying to save time by not colliding with these things, which is crazy logic at the best of times. And so the average player will find this level unnecessarily fruitless. 
city approach level, you can see 4, 3, 2, 1 in the very centre of the bottom of the screen, and that gives away how many enemies that we've shot in order to trigger the landing bay. But we actually need to blow away quite some more than that to give us extra time. You can see the yellow bar on the right, that actually shows us the shield strength, and that will reduce the more enemies we blow away, and when we reduce that shield strength down to just two bars, that's the time to land, just like this. And the arrow will point us to the right place. We then need to press the space bar of all keys to eject from our craft. No, we can't just hold down that fire button. But you can see we have almost a whole minute now to get through this level, give or take damage. And that means we have twice as much time as we had before, simply by blowing away more enemies on the previous level. And of course, how is the player supposed to figure that out? Well, now that we have all the time in the world to take on this, and three attempts to do it, I'll just tell you a little bit about this game. It was coded by Martin Edmondson, who is famous for the Shadow of the Beast series, of course, and he started out on the Amiga in 1989 with Ballistics, again for Psygnosis. Awesome was co-coded by Carmack Batestone, who worked on Shadow of the Beast 2 and 3 with Martin Edmondson. And on the Amiga, I am just about good enough to take down that boss and walk down a flight of steps to the city. Like all good space sims, we get to enter a terminal and that means we can trade and buy and sell goods. And at this point I'm selling those 15 discs that I managed to mine from those enemies on the very first level. And we can sell those to get some more fuel. And fuel is at a premium in this game. You'll have to take on missions to get fuel. But we also have some credits as well, which we can spend on upgrades. Let's just buy ourselves the Sonic Mining Laser. And hopefully that will cut down on the enemies and means we need less power to the weaponry and we can have more of the shields. But I can't see any way to actually buy extra shields in this shop and perhaps this isn't a shop that sells shields. But we can equip our ship and we can also take on contracts and we can see before us there is a package to be taken there. It's industrial hardware and I'll actually reject that. There's also military equipment going to Tundras, and I'll actually accept that, and that will give us extra fuel. And so we need to make our way to Tundras as the next port in the system. In order to access that location, we need to access the Navicom, and that will give us a readout of all the planets in this system all the ones that we need to move through in order to escape it before it blows up and you can see those are naturally orbiting and we start off in the center unfortunately we can only travel 10 light years in any given direction as far as i know and so if there is anything further away than that we probably can't get there we can also find out some planetary information about those and we can check those out for trading commodities Unfortunately, there isn't enough here to make this a great exploration sim and only a smattering of RPG and even these buttons don't have an obvious use. But if we accelerate time, hopefully some of those planets will be nearer to us and so we can actually get there. By clicking on the rotate icon, that will rotate through a number of days and you can see our hotel bill piling up in the bottom corner Yes, it will actually cost us money for staying around and waiting, but now you can see there is only seven light years to get to our destination, and we can make that jump no problem. We move on to the second set of stages as we make our way there, and once again we can transfer some power to the shields, and hopefully watching out on this first section for those extra shields so that we can top up all the energy that we lost. I feel it's a pity that this game is virtually devoid of sound effects throughout the menus and we get a simple blast of the guns in the game itself. All the rest is the awesome music, which is really awesome in this game, and there's lots to get the teeth into. 
Unfortunately, you won't be able to see many of those shields leaking out of these crafts, and if they do, those discs will virtually disappear within one second, and so there is no point trying to chase after those. better firepower this game opens out just a little bit more and it's just a little bit easier but the player will still have to push forward and pull back to get out of trouble press it on quickly and it's very easy to reverse your way out of trouble As long as we have power, we can continue in the game, and as far as I know, we didn't pick up much. Not that the player's eyes will be darting towards their power store, but diverting power to the goons or the shields is a very novel thing to do, especially in these types of games, and it gives that player an extra thing to think about. If they give all the power to the shields, of course, they will last just that bit longer. But on this level you can see red mines and of course we shouldn't roll into those red mines or they'll incur damage. And the enemies also have bombs which are static things until you walk into those and then they blow up. And those are grey blobs which look precisely like the shields that we need. There are the shields which disappear after one second and this guy actually contained extra shields which gives us just that bit more energy. But if we blow away too many of these things, sometimes they will lay that, which is a bomb, and I blew up upon it. You can also hear that the music and the sound effects don't really like playing together. And yes, this was an Amiga 500 release, but to my mind, I think they tried to cram too much into this. And according to the comments on the Lemon Amiga website, some of those said that maybe one track, well done, would have meant less disc loading, and some more sound effects would have been better than music if it took so long to load the game. I've actually cut out most of the loading on this review, but loading from disc, endlessly grinding away just to load a mini subsection, which is over in a couple of minutes, isn't really the stuff of great games. And even though these graphics are superb, it doesn't mean to say that this game is any better for it. The graphics were also created by Martin Edmondson and Cormac Batestone, who of course coded this. And the introduction picture you saw was by John Harris, who also did the box art. Getting low on power now, if we are careful through the asteroids then we shouldn't need too much shield and we can divert all the power to the guns which blows the asteroids away before they get anywhere near us. But if we aren't very competent in the asteroids like me, I'll transfer most of the power to the shield just so that I can survive a bit longer. And if you have maybe 400 shield, then you can certainly survive these mini levels. And if you go chasing after the blue crystals which appear for a little extra cash, then you'll be unfortunately running into those asteroids and losing power. And sometimes you can just blow those up just like you can blow up the shields, otherwise known as the discs. And it's easy to blow everything up in this game and walk out with nothing. Of all aspects of this game, the music is particularly well done, and that was created again by Timothy Brian Wright and Lee Wright, and they worked together on Amnios, Shadow of Louis II, and Aquaventura. According to one comment on the Lemon Amiga database, the best way to complete this game is to fly 
to Aquos first of all, and then Tundras, and then Folas, and then hopefully you should be able to find some extra fuel there and continue on to the other planets. But I've never actually got that far in this game, and as a space trading, it's pretty weak, and as an action game, it's pretty weak as well. They're made up of various set pieces made out of various sub levels. And of course, the most frustrating of those is this one where we face the boss. And in this case, the boss with our weedy firepower isn't very easy to knock out. And it's very easy to be in the wrong place at the wrong time in these levels. So, what I like to do is to hold down the fire button as soon as that thing appears and simply wander in its path or try to avoid it as it returns and sometimes you can avoid the return and sometimes look at that I took a beating simply being in the wrong corner and of course these things could be memorized that's another hit and if your energy is automatically wasted by this initial attack then you won't have hope in heck of completing the rest and so I will get through the first part, but the second part, where this boss actually splits up into 10 different parts that you have to blow up, it's pretty darn difficult. see me moving to the safe spot trying to work out how to take on this level and failing miserably we'll just take a look at the scores ace magazine gave awesome 90 percent in february 1991 which was the highest score i could find and the one gave it 85 cbg gave it 81 and the action gave it 88 zap gave this game 79 percent Powerplay Magazine gave this game 69% along with the current score on the Lemon Amiga database which is of course flexible and the lowest score I could find was from Amiga Joker at 62% so a big variation of scores but most magazines commented that this was virtually style over substance and great graphics and great sound do not a great game make and this is a classic example of that phrase and style of the substance, well, Psygnosis had really great style and mystery and not that much substance, I'm afraid, particularly with virtually no shield power and no emulation to do anything about it. So that's my review of Awesome. It's okay, not really deep enough for a space trading game, not really friendly for an action game. The walking around requires us to know in advance that the time limit can be advanced by killing more enemies and little annoyances like that and at the end of the game we get another atmospheric end sequence so all the best levels in this game have been done far better in other games and that's why awesome isn't really rated highly among amiga users and this game only appeared on the Amiga and the Atari ST but I can't help feeling that this release could have been just a little bit more on the playability side to help the user progress through the game and according to the Lemon database yes some users have actually completed this by moving from planet to planet so thank you for viewing another Lemon Amiga game guide and review hope to see you again soon thank you Thank you.